If you're planning out a Ubiquiti deployment, it can be a bit tricky and unknowingly where you need to start, whether it's your home, business, a client, or even a warehouse. So don't skip this video. I'm gonna show you seven completely free tools that I use to plan my Unify network deployments. These tools will help you map out coverage, calculate power needs, compare devices, and get real world deployment ideas without spending a single penny. So let's jump straight in. Let's start with number one, and that is design.ui.com. This has been around for a little while and it has improvements that have steadily been making it better and better. So let's take a look at exactly how this works. You can start by creating a new project and we're gonna give this a name, so test project. And then you can choose the type of building it is. Other, school, hotel, stadium, home, office, whatever you're choosing. It's gonna ask you to import your floor plans as an image or a PDF or use your mobile app to create a 3D scan. Now, this is an image that I've just grabbed off Google. So we're gonna drop this straight in. It's gonna go off and upload your floor plan. This is what it looks like. The first thing you're gonna be doing is setting your scale. So we set the scale so we can, I know this wall along here is 64 feet. So we can drag that along here and then it will tell you how big is it. So I can say 64 feet and we click save. And that's now set the scale of your plan. The next thing you would wanna do is draw your walls and rooms. So we have this draw button here, right here, and you can choose the type of material that's set. So we can go and draw our wall around the outside, or if you wanna set a specific room, you can go and do that. You would select drywall, for example, if that's the case, and make your room up. Once you've drawn all your walls, you can map out your cable routes. So to start with, I would just go and give yourself some cable routes. We'll go along here. Uh, the IT room is along here, so we'll run the cable tray into there and we'll run one along here. So we've got a rough idea as to where all of our cables are going to be running across, which is useful. And then you can start placing your devices so you can pick yourself a, a Wi-Fi access point. And the good thing about this straight away is it, it shows you the sort of Wi-Fi map that you're going to have. So if we put one here and one along here, I'm not saying this is the right deployment, but it gives you a rough idea. Also, same with the cameras. You can go and select yourself a camera. Let's say we're gonna choose the AI Pro and we actually want one out the front just here. So we can pop that there. I know I haven't put a wall just there at the moment, but we can then rotate this and we can see what area of coverage we are gonna get with that camera. Just like a lot of popular shows, here's one I created earlier. As I mentioned to you, you can go and choose these buttons at the top. So you can choose Wi-Fi, and this is giving me a good understanding about the coverage in the office. So we can see, we can move this around if we wanted to move it in this corner or into a room, you might lose a bit of signal elsewhere. I feel for this deployment right here, this is the most optimum place. Same with this right here, we can move this around to feel where we're getting the maximum amount of coverage. And this way, there's no mistake about how you're setting this up. Once you've populated all your devices, you can literally go to something like draw cables, and there's something at the top which says auto draw connections, or you can draw the connections yourself if you wish to do so, but you can auto draw the connections and it gives a, I've already done this, so it gives me a full list of how everything is gonna be connected and the cable runs that you're gonna need. And just to show you what that looks like, it looks a little something like this. We have the type of cable you're gonna be using and then the run that you're gonna be doing and what you're gonna be connecting to. Click finish and then it goes and does all those drawings for you. At any given point, if you wanted to see, for example, camera coverage or Wi-Fi, you can just hover over them and that will give that for you. And now this is where it starts to get that little bit more interesting. So we have a topology map out where you can go and see how everything is connected. And then we have a port layout too. Again, everything is listed out here, what it's all connected to. You can go in and tweak this slightly. So if you wanna change the ports, the only thing I've found that we've not been able to do is if you want to change the actual device. It might not be something I've seen, but this is the issue that I've had so far. So if I wanted to change my Dream Machine Pro Max, for example, and I wanted to change it to another device, it's going to the higher capacity aggregation at the moment, but if I wanted to change it to the Dream Machine Pro, for example, there doesn't seem to be a very simple way of doing that. And then it spits out an equipment list. So it's telling you the estimated cable length you're gonna need, so 2,000 feet worth of cable, and there's 266 feet worth of existing cable routes that are already there. And if you ever need to change the quantities, so we can plus, minus if you wanted to add something in here you can do if you wanted a spare for example if you needed a third access point you could add all this in here and it gives you everything you need including the cable down below it gives you a full total price so something like that would be seventeen thousand six hundred dollars one last thing i will add right here is you can upload another floor plan for another floor if you wish to do so and then again you start from scratch you set the scale and you have then your office space and floor two. You can export this to PDFs, you can send this to a client, or you can keep a copy for yourself if you need to. And the one final thing that I'll show you, which is really cool, is the 3D design option. So you can switch to a 3D model. If you are zoomed into your browser, it may skew a little bit, so just keep that one in mind, because that's what was happening to me. 
But once you do this, you can see we have the options to simulate the type of Wi-Fi and we can still choose to move these around. So if we still want to play around with it and tweak it a little bit more, we can do that. We can have a look at the camera options. We can then change those around and then you can just turn it off. So the 3D option is a really good feature. This next one, I bet not a lot of you have heard about and that is wifi.ui.com. And what this allows you to do is drag, configure devices and you can instantly see what sort of Wi-Fi results you're gonna be getting from a user's view. We can interact with it so we can move it around. We can set up a mesh network. We can mount the AP. We can change the mounting position. We can play around with the antennas if that's the case and also the settings within too. Before we start playing around with this, the first thing you probably want to do is type in all the details here. So your ceiling height, so we'll leave it at three meters. Country you're in, which is United Kingdom, what unit system you want to use. So we're using the U7 Pro XGS at this point and it even lets you select the different color. So if we go to the U7 Pro XGS, we can go white or we can go black. That's the one we're using. So we can see that down here, we can switch from ceiling mounted to wall mounted, that will give you wall mounted coverage option. This is ceiling mounted coverage. So we've chosen the access point. We now need to choose the device we're gonna be testing with. So let's just say a, let's just say a device that has Wi-Fi 7. And then we have a few different options that we can play around with to get the most out of it. So at this point, if there was 0% channel usage, 2.4 gigahertz with 40 megahertz channel width, you would be expected to get somewhere around 516 megabits per second in terms of throughput. Five gigahertz using 160 megahertz would expect 2.16 gigabits per second and six gigahertz you would expect something similar unless you go to the 320. Then you would be looking at 3.89 gigabits per second. Now this is where it starts becoming a little bit clever. So let's say the office space I'm in, let's say I'm standing six and a half meters away from the access point. I want to know what sort of speed I'm going to get. Let's say we move around with the distance. You can see the close I am. If I'm right under it, I'm expecting to get somewhere around 4.3 gigabits per second. But as I start moving away so three meters drops to 3.89 five meters it drops to 3.24 and as i keep moving further it goes down and down now that is a completely clear channel if we start playing around with the channel usage you can see at 50 percent usage it drops down to a gig and then 75 percent usage 540 meg and then if we move all the way up, it starts getting less and less. You're sort of able to start calculating the sort of Wi-Fi performance you're gonna get from these devices. One thing that does play a factor in terms of signal strength is gonna be your megahertz. The wider the width, the more interference you're likely to have. So if I go to 160, it gets a bit bigger. If I go to 80, it grows even more, 40 and then 20. If we stay at the 20 megahertz width, I should be able to move all the way to about 11 meters away and have a fairly decent connection. You even have the option to choose MLO if you want, so it then starts simulating those with your aggregated links. And finally, when you select an outdoor model, you can choose between indoor and outdoor. You can choose wall mounted or ceiling mounted, depending on what you're looking to do. And then you can choose between the antenna, so this is the option you had. So built-in antenna or omnidirectional. Now, once you're done playing around with the Wi-Fi stuff and the design center, we can start working out if those solutions are the right ones for you. So we can go to the capacity calculator and that is simply going to calculator.ui.com. And that brings you to this page right here. Now, whether you're looking to deploy just network, protect, talk, access, whatever you're looking to do, you've got those options right here. So we have the UDM Pro Max. We have an option to deploy, let's say we're deploying five access points. We're deploying VPN, security detections, ad blocking and QoS. So that's all there. And that's assuming 10 clients per AP. We're putting in Unify Protect. We had maybe four 2K cameras and it also simulates the drive storage time. So if you had eight terabytes worth of storage in there, you'd get 22 days. 16 would be 44 days approximately. And then you can also add in talk. Let's say we have 15 phones in there. And that's caught with call recording. And then we have Unify Access. So we're gonna have maybe 20 doors, for example. And that gives you a rough idea in terms of you can build this out and you can see the compute resource and what's happening within it. Now, one thing I would recommend, don't try and push something to 80, 90% and be like, oh yes, it will be okay. If you're pushing a piece of hardware constantly at that, you may not notice it straight away. It might be another year or two down the line, but you will start noticing it slowing down and even possibly getting hardware failures because you're pushing it to its limit. So have a look at what's going on. If we go to the UDM Pro SE, for example, and if we were to do a similar sort of deployment, you could see that that's pushing to 83%. 
So at this point, I'd probably start thinking about upgrading to the next model, which I would then look at the UDM Pro Max, which then brings down the compute resource of everything you have set up. If you're looking to just do a protect deployment, you can look at the UNVR Pro, and then we can say we've got X number of cameras. So we have 30 cameras going in, and then we can say how many days do we want? And it's telling you how many you need to set your drive base. And then you can select the number of days you're going to want the recording. So if you're looking for 22 days, for example, that'd be perfectly fine. You'd need these many drives. But if we go to the maximum, which is 29 days, and you're like, mm, I think I need maybe 60 days, then possibly we might need to look at 16 terabytes. And then if we push that to the limit, it gets you to the 59 days. Now on the UNVRs, you're able to install access. So you have the option here and you can then add doors as well if you wish to do so. Now, number four has got to be one of my favorite ones and it's stuff that I use generally quite frequently throughout my videos and when I'm trying to compare models and see what to what um, is techspecs.ui.com. Now with this, you have the option to hit compare in the top right hand corner, whether you're looking at gateway switches, Wi-Fi cameras, whatever you're looking at, you can go to compare click on there and it gives you the option to tick the boxes. So if I'm looking at the EFG versus the UDM Pro Max, it will tell me everything I need to know. If I just want to know the unique specs in between, I can click that. But if I want to know everything, it will show me down here. So straight away, I can look at the Unify application suite and it tells me that actually the EFG only runs Unify network. It doesn't run everything else. How many, how many Unify devices it can manage, how many cameras it doesn't, it can't do one, the simultaneous number of users that you can use and all the connections within. So this is really useful when you're trying to compare one to the other to see exactly what the difference is. This is a really useful website. A lot of people tend to find this useful also with Wi-Fi access points so you can put them side by side and see which one you want to pick over the other. So number five is just UI.com. There's a lot of information that you can read off here. Their website has been recently revamped, making it a lot easier to use and more unify esque in terms of how they operate their business. So we can see right here, we have a start here function at the top and we can go to resources. So these are the ones that we've probably used already. If you want to look at some case studies, you want to see where this is being used or how it's being used in whatever scenario you're looking at. And then you can move across the top as well. So we're looking at gateways where you can compare them all. You can look at switching, compare them all. Physical security, again, you can have a look at all of it. But for example, you can also go into switching. If we take this, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom. I am zoomed in on this to make it a little bit easier for you to read. So if it's looking a bit big, and then we also have a comparison option here as well. So we can pick what we want. So we want the enterprise campus and we're looking at the professional versions. So we can go to the XG and then we can see again a very quick look at what the difference is between them. We can have a look at POE output, POE availability, is there Pro AV support, how is it mounting and what sort of redundancy options are there. Once you have everything set up and you're starting to put everything together, you can start looking at something called inner space. And what that does, that's that set right here. You can go and install it into your Unify console. And it's this right in the bottom left hand corner. It looks fairly similar to what you were looking at previously. So you bring your plans. Once it's imported, I've just quickly drawn a wall around this. You can import it from Design Center if you're using the same hardware. You can bring that in. So that's not a problem right there. The main thing I wanted to show you was around the access points. So if we bring the U7 Pro Max in here and I have an AC Pro, which is right here, so I can pop those in. You can see automatically it shows me the channels that they're using along with the utilization. Now, if you want to, you can jump into settings and start playing around with some of the channels to see what's happening between the two. But this gives you a good understanding between them. So it can show you exactly what is happening right here. And also to make sure you don't have any overlapping channels, because that's also quite important to make sure that your channels aren't overlapped and you run into further problems. Now, I do have another video coming soon where I talk about Wi-Fi planning and the best things that you need to do. And I also have another video and I also have another video that talks about optimizing these Wi-Fi access points as well. So I'll leave a link to that one down in the description. And when I do release the other one, make sure you're subscribed and the notification button is turned on for all notifications. Now the last tool is something you can choose to use or not use this entirely up to you but the Ubiquity community is very active. So you have a few different websites that you can use or a few different applications. You have community.ui.com where you can have a little look through here and you can go into some of these topics and post your own questions within and there are people that are very happy to help you. So you also have websites like Reddit. So if you are very active in that, there's a Ubiquity community in there. So you can go and post your questions there if you wish to do so. And also there's places like Facebook too. So if you use social media and you can have a look on here, you can see there's 162,000 people in this group. You can go and ask your networking questions there. There's a separate one for protection 
select and there's also one for access to that you can look at if and also finally shameless plug you can always come to me we can help you out with designing and getting set up so my details also are down in the description below so those are the seven free tools that i recommend for anyone planning a unified network they're simple they're easy to use they're powerful and it leaves less for you to think about when you're setting up your ubiquity deployment but what i want to know is which tool was new and which one would you find the most useful when you're setting up if you want to see any further deep dives into any of these let me know down in the comments below for now this is inside wire and i'll see you in the next one